Welcome to day 20 of the 30 day my D for SOC analyst challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along, I would highly recommend that you pause the video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to set up your own Mythic C2 instance and have a better understanding of how Mythic works. Let's get started. To get started with Mythic C2, the first thing you want to do is head over to your cloud provider, which in our case, we're using Vulture. Once you log in there, you want to click on Deploy, which is on the top right corner, and click on Deploy New Server. I'll be using Cloud Compute Shared CPU, and I'll select Toronto. For the operating system, I'll be using Ubuntu 22.04. And for the specs, it is recommended to run Mythic on a virtual machine with at least two CPUs and four gigs of RAM. So with that being said, let's click on regular cloud compute and two CPUs and four gigs of RAM. Scrolling down, we don't need auto backups and we don't need IPv6. I'll leave the server settings as default and for the server host name, I'll call it mydfir-mythic and deploy now. While this is installing, I am going to install Kali Linux. And if you don't have Kali Linux, all you need to do is head over to kali.org and then click on download. And since I will be using a virtual machine, I'll click on virtual machine. And then from here, you can select whichever hypervisor you're using. In my case, I'll be using VMware, but you can use any of these that are available. Do keep in mind that the default credentials are Kali and Kali. So I'll click on this download button. Once Kali is finished downloading, let's head over to our downloads directory and I'll right click, click on 7-zip and extract to the directory of Kali-Linux. Now I do have 7-zip already installed, but just in case you do not have that installed, you can head over to 7-zip.org and then download the executable. Now that my Kali Linux is extracted, I can double click the directory. And what we're looking for is this .vmx file. Now, if you don't see this .vmx at the top, you want to click on view. And then you want to make sure that the file name extensions is checked. By default, it is not. So by default, it will look like this. Notice how there's no file extension. And yes, I am assuming that you are using a Windows machine. Now, if you check the file name extensions, you'll see the file name .vmx. This is the one we want. I'll double click this and our VMware workstation should automatically import it into our workstation and let's power it on. Now that that's good to go, let's head back over to our Vulture. I'll close this out and let's go into our Mythic. Click on view console and it's prompting for a login. So we know we're good to go. What I'll do is I'll open up a PowerShell session and SSH directly into this virtual machine. So I'll type in SSH root at Paste in the IP address, type in yes, and let's copy the password. And now we're in. So I'll clear out the screen. First thing I want to do is update and upgrade our repository. So apt-get update and apt-get upgrade-y. I'll hit enter and clear out the screen. Now we can start installing our prerequisites for Mythic. What it requires is docker compost. So I'll do docker dash compost, type in Y for yes, hit enter. And it also requires make. Now make is already installed, so we're good to go. Next, we'll clone the repository. So I'll type in git clone and paste in the GitHub repository, which is github.com slash it's dash a dash feature slash mythic. Once it's done cloning, you can type in ls and we do see mythic right here. So I'll do a cd mythic to change into the directory, clear out the screen, type in ls. And the shell script that we're interested in is the install underscore docker underscore ubuntu. To invoke this, I'll type in dot forward slash install underscore docker underscore u and I'll tab for auto completion. Hit enter and hit enter again. Once that's done, clear out the screen. Now let's run the command make. We do get an error saying cannot connect to the Docker daemon at Unix and this path here. What we can do is check if Docker is running by typing in systemctl status Docker. And as we can see, it has failed. Let's try restarting our Docker by typing in systemctl restart Docker. 
clear out the screen and let's check the status here. Now it is active. So if I were to run make again, do make sure that we are under the mythic directory because if you're not, this will not work. So I'll type in make and that's it. Takes about two seconds. Now we can start the mythic CLI by typing in dot forward slash mythic dash CLI start. And this will start mythic. Once that is done, we should be able to log into our mythic. But before we do that, I am going to change a little bit of configurations here. I want to tighten up our firewall just a little bit to only allow my computer and the other agents, AKA our target machines to communicate with our mythic. I don't need the entire internet to scan and try to connect into our box. So to do this, I am going to create another firewall. So I'll click on manage and add firewall group. I'll call this my defer dash mythic dash firewall. Add firewall group and I will say TCP. Let's do a range of one to 65, 535. The source is going to be my IP and I'll add that in. Next, I'll open up another tab for compute and I'll take a look at what my public IP address for my Windows server is and my Linux server. So I'll copy the Windows server first and let's do another TCP. Let's do the whole range and custom IP address and add. Now let's do the same for our SSH server. So one through 65, source IP is custom, and I'll copy the SSH server. Put that in there, and we're good. Click on my mythic server, go under settings and firewall. Make sure my firewall is selected, which is the mydefer mythic firewall. Click on update firewall group, and we should be good to go. Now we tightened our security just a little bit. All right, let's try logging into our mythic web GUI. I'll copy the public IP address and this lives under port 7443. Now it says the plain HTTP request was sent to an HTTPS port. What this means is that you simply need to add in HTTPS and you should be good to go we see this nice mythic login screen. By default, the username is mythic underscore admin. For the password, you can find this under your environment variable. So if you type in ls, or you know what, let me clear with the screen, type in ls. Now you might not see the env file, and that is because it is a hidden file. So what you need to do is type in ls dash la, and now you can see the .env file. So your configurations for mythic is going to be stored under this file. I'll clear that out. Let's do a cat.env. And here we go. We have our passwords right here. Mythic admin underscore password is this starting with K and ending in capital R. Now yours is going to be different. And if you ever wanted to change your username, this is where you can do it. Now, as an FYI, by the time this video is posted, I am tearing everything down. So don't try and connect to my Mythic C2. And this right here is our Mythic C2 server. We can see that there are zero callbacks, which makes sense because we didn't do anything and we just installed it. But as you can see, it gives a pretty nice overview of what's going on. If you click on this headset icon, these are all of your payload slash C2 services. If you click on the hazard icon, these are all of your payloads and there's an action button on the top right. We can generate a new payload, a new wrapper, we can import or even show deleted payloads. If I click on search, these would be all of our callbacks. So what agent called back to our Mythic C2 server? What were the tasks ran? What were the files, credentials, keylogs, artifacts, and all these other good stuff. Next are files. This is where you can host a file in Mythic and where you can find your uploads as well. So if you were to download something from the target machine, it can be shown here. And then you have your artifacts, which is the fingerprint, proxies for the socks, screenshots, credentials, callbacks, reporting. So this one is pretty nice. It can actually provide you with a nice report and it provides us with the MITRE ATT&CK mapping. So for example, if I wanted to focus on, let's say valid accounts, specifically local accounts, I can click on this action and then I can either fetch all commands that are mapped to the MITRE or fetch task mapping by payload and just many other different options here. So the MITRE ATT&CK mapping is quite powerful if you really take a moment to learn it. And finally, we have tags. So you can begin tagging your target machines. And for the operation, it is currently set to Operation Chimera, but we can change this to whatever you like. For example, 
we can change this to operation my defer. And just like that. Of course, you can change this to dark mode if you want by clicking on the sun icon. And for me personally, I absolutely love the dark mode. So that is what I'll be using. And that's about it. A nice high level overview of what Mythic C2 looks like. In the next couple of videos, we'll be using Kali Linux to attack our target machine, generate a payload, and using a C2 profile to generate our Mythic agent. That way, our Windows server can use that agent to connect back into our Mythic C2 server. Mythic is pretty cool and quite powerful if you really put some time into it and play around with it. But do promise me that you'll practice with Mythic in a controlled environment, aka an environment in which you own or have permission to tamper with. We aren't here to do anything stupid. In the next video, I'll walk you through on how you can start creating your own Mythic agent and then begin attacking our Windows Server machine that we created on day five. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.